Hey guys, I'm Zara. I'm just going to do a quick video with some pointers on Star Citizen Racing because it's just such a different game in terms of racing and how to race in this than it is in normal racing games and anything that you might watch on TV. So first off, the, the biggest suggestion is start in Drone Sim. Don't waste your time going on multiplayer as you're going to spend a lot of downtime waiting for people to ready up or you're going to have short races if you have somebody that can really get through the track quick and you're not going to have that time to actually really look at the track and really learn it the way that you should. By doing this you're going to be a lot less frustrated, you're going to have a lot more fun racing. So even though it's going to take just a little bit more to act, time to actually practice, but you can actually enjoy the practice instead of throwing your headset or your controllers all over the place and having to replace them all. So first thing in drone sim is figure out what ship that you like to use. The M50 is obviously a lot faster around the turns, it's a lot more maneuverable of a ship, it's a pretty fast ship. The 350R is even faster than the M50, but it doesn't maneuver nearly as well. The Mustang is uh, almost, uh, it's, it's about in between in terms of maneuverability. When it's got uh, the boost on, it's about as maneuverable as an M50, and it's got a huge boost um, uh, tank and to, to use for that. So it's not quite as fast as the M50, but that's kind of where it makes up is in the boost. So once you figure out what ships you want to use, just take a little while to kind of fly around with it different speeds, set the throttle at like 80%, and just kind of look at how this vector indicator, which is that uh, kind of the square with the arrow on it, uh, moves in terms of uh, how much input that you're putting into. That nose is obviously the crosshair where I'm pointing at. At these speeds I can turn it as fast as I want and I can see how, fa how long does it take for that vector indicator to come back to my nose. If I increase the throttle, how much longer does it take? You don't have to spend too much time like this, it's a little bit hard to see it because you don't have an actual frame of reference to know how much distance is covered in this time. But spend just a little bit of time kind of looking at it. So once you've done this, we'll go ahead and load up old Vandervall, or in this case, Rickard. You're going to have to first off is learning the track, figuring out what line to use, where the obstacles are, and how to best get from gate to gate. Obviously this is Star Citizen. So the biggest difference between this and automotive racing is that you don't have the same boundaries in the track. As you can see, I can go straight at, well, with the exception of that giant building in the way, I can go straight at gate two. I don't have to go all the way around what is what looks like the probably the, the suggested route, which is indicated by these holographic arrows. So one of the biggest things to look at in terms of the line is what's in your way and how does that set you up for the next gate. So for the first time that you go through the track, stop at every gate, look where the next gate is, and look at the two different routes, or the multiple routes that you have to take for it. Here I can go the short side around the building, or I can go the long way. Go the short side around the building, obviously I'm going to have to slow a lot uh, f uh, down a lot farther, or a lot faster I should say, um, and if I go all the way around the building, I can do a lot more of a steady turn, I don't have to slow down quite as much. Obviously, the trade-off is that it's not quite as direct of a route. Another thing to bear in mind is, as I kind of touched on just a little bit before, is how it sets you up for the next gate. There's two main ways that I can take this turn right now. The first is going straight at where my crosshair is right now, and it's going to give me a nice amount of space in which to make this final turn to gate four. There's not a whole lot in the, in the way, there's not a whole lot of risk and it can happen on, with a lot less uh, need for precision. It's a lot more forgiving. However, the way that I generally take this turn is since I'm going to be coming out of this gate a, l a little bit, quite a bit faster obviously than I'm going right now, I'm not even going any speed, is that when I start, when I actually am looking up here, I'm not going to be sitting in the gate obviously, I'm going to be looking about right here, this is where my ship's going to be when I'm coming out of that turn. And the, what I end up doing is I actually end up going through this little hole right here with the M50, these kinds of holes are a lot easier to get through than with the Mustang or the 350R, so they're a lot bigger ships. But as you can see, this building restricted the way that, or how soon I could make that turn. So that turn ends up having to be a lot more sudden, a lot more precise, or I'm going to end up either taking it wide or going into the gate itself. However, if I do the alternate route and I go out the wider track, it's going to be a lot easier. I can start off the turn a lot sooner so that I don't have to make such a sharp 
and sudden movements with the joystick. This is definitely the, the line that I would suggest taking when you're really kind of learning your ship and how to really race fast. Because ultimately speaking, you don't have to slow down as nearly as much to get through this turn, so while it might be more distance to cover, you can cover it in a faster speed. Once you start getting a lot faster, you can start making these more riskier turns. So once you go through all the different gates and you kind of get a little bit of an idea of where the next gate is, one thing to bear in mind is that these holographic arrows will generally point you where the next gate is. Well, they aren't always found in the right spot. They're kind of hard to see. As you can see, coming up to this gate, it's kind of hard to see these holographic uh, arrows. They kind of give you a good idea, a good little reminder of where the next gate's going to be. It does take quite a while to memorize where all these gates are, so don't be frustrated if it takes you a while and you keep forgetting where the gates are, especially on tracks like Rickard and even more so on Defford. It took me a long time to learn all the turns on Defford. So once you really start learning this and you really kind of get an idea of where all of these little bombs they like to call cameras or all these little outcroppings from these buildings is, if you've spent five minutes racing you'll know to hate. Once you kind of get a general idea of where everything is then you can really start going around. I'd suggest at least doing one lap like that where you just kind of look at everything even two or three or every once every time that you get on for you know, the first five times until you kind of learn the track. You're never going to really memorize where all of them are, but you'd have at least kind of an idea. Checkpoint. So once you kind of get that idea, then you can start racing through it. Start off about 80% throttle and don't use your, after, uh, your afterburner or your boost. This will kind of give you just a little bit of a sense on what you kind of have to deal with. As you can see as I come up to this, I have to deal with that Checkpoint. building right there. If I go into it too fast and can't turn tight enough, I'm going to slam into it and it's going to be a bad time. As you start getting a little bit of practice on the track, increase your speed 90% and then start using your, your boost. Then go to 100% using boost, then go into 100% and using afterburn on some of these turns. To really get the fastest time on uh, the laps, the more you use your afterburner, the faster you're going to go unless you can use the boost fuel on actually just boosting around the turns the faster your ship's going to go if you can use it as an afterburner instead. So the other biggest thing that I should probably talk about is the two different methods that you have to race with. I did a video on Defford that some of you might have seen that really kind of shows these two different styles uh, right next to each other, uh, and I'll hopefully put a link to that video on the bottom of this this YouTube. So just go ahead and look for it in the comments section of this, uh, the description of the video. But the first method, and I, I think it's kind of one of the more fun ways, or I think it is the more fun way, and it's definitely a lot more forgiving, is the F1 style. Obviously, as the name suggests, it's a lot more like an F1, where you're breaking into the uh, before the turn, breaking before the turn, going around the turn at a constant speed and then accelerating out of the turn. Sure. It'll take you a little bit to figure out where these brake zones are, especially if you're up to the point where you're using afterburner. But once you do, it's a lot easier to make a correction if you make a mistake than it is if you're drifting. So one thing I'm going to splice in this video that I wanted to hit and I realized I didn't cover in the first take is the concept that there's still an apex of the turn even though it's not, you don't have the same boundaries as you do in automotive racing. So what up old Vanderbilt, because he's a really uh, there's two really good turns that really uh, accentuate that uh, concept and even though this isn't as much of a boundary issue as it is a speed issue it's a very critical aspect if you really want to get fast lap times. So with this first take I'm going to start pointing at the inside of this gate. As you can see I have to go all the way through the gate before I can start the turn. I will slam into that billboard and it's going to take a lot uh, more time to get through that gate than it is if I had just started by going through the outside. Checkpoint. So the second time that I come around I'm going to um, start on the outside Checkpoint. and I'm going to be able to start the turn a lot sooner. You're also going to see this on the turn coming up here Complete. is that I can start the turn a lot sooner Checkpoint. and I actually end up with a lot less wasted track space so I don't swing nearly as wide out from the gate Checkpoint. and the turn as I want. So you can see I started a lot farther out in terms of where I was pointing, so I could start the turn a lot sooner. A lot of these turns that also kind of keeps you away from obstacles. So generally speaking on this turn I start at that bottom part of the gate. I'm a little bit farther away from the apex, 
In terms of being really fast, you want the apex so that you kiss kind of the inside of that gate. The other method to use is, as I just said, drifting. This is a lot more like a rally race than it is like an F1 race where you're actually going around the turn and your nose is pointing a lot. Your nose is far um, in front of your uh, vector indicator that just caught up to my piper right there. The way that I like to do this best to make sure that the IFCS does the turn correctly is to throttle punch it. And I'm going to show you real quick before I explain what a throttle punch is. This is I'm going to try to show you. The IFCS making a mistake. Checkpoint. As I turn here and I'm decelerating, ah, this will have to set up a little bit different. I'm going to start turning the ship and I'm going to actually decelerate to really, this is how it uh, will always, uh, you can always see it, uh, but it'll happen randomly to you when you're making a, a tight turn and it'll catch you by surprise. And for a lot of you guys that have drift into gates when you've already been reducing your throttle. This is what's causing it, and it's, you probably didn't know what was causing it. But as you start your turn, there's only so much thrust that the ship can provide. So as you saw, when I was starting that turn and I was decelerating, that vector indicator actually started moving slower as it was trying to do decelerate the ship. This is because the ship only has so much maximum thrust that it can put into the thrusters. So if the ship decides that it needs to get more s overall speed, then it's going to put a lot more uh, of that thrust into the main engine, and you might not have full thrust on that's possible going to the maneuvering Check thrusters point. and the moving thrusters. What that's going to do, you're going to go way wide on the turn, and you're going to probably end up running into something. So what I like to do to make sure this doesn't happen is, is that throttle punch. Basically, as I'm coming into the turn, I'm going to turn down my throttle, for a nice short little turn, maybe probably down to 90%, and it's only going to be for about a half second. I'm going to punch it back up to 100% as I'm in the turn. I make sure that the throttle cooperates and does what I want it to, and I don't have any unexpected uh, departures from expected flight. So definitely play a lot around with it a lot. With drift, it's going to take a while for you to really see how soon you should start the throttle punch and how soon you should actually start uh, pulling up the ship. Speed makes a huge difference. Checkpoint. And one of the things uh, that well, I think will help you guys a lot that I do is that especially if I'm on a track um, that I'm using more boost on uh, boost fuel onto actual Checkpoint. boosting instead of afterburners I like to put the boost right in the middle of the turn that way if I know that I have once I start my turn, I can see that I've made it a little bit too late. I'm going to boost later. Checkpoint. Or if I've made the uh, the turn too uh, too late, excuse me, I think I've messed that up as I'm kind of paying attention what I'm doing on the screen. If I start the turn too early, then obviously my uh, potential uh, problem is running into the near side of this gate. And so if I boost a little bit later, I'm going to drift just a little bit farther and I'll correct it. If I can see that I have made my turn too late, then I might run into the back side of the gate and it'll help me go around the turn faster. It's just kind of a nice little way that helps you get out of trouble. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, send me a message on forums, whatever works best for you, and I'll do my best to answer it. Hope this helps, and happy racing.